Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball brought to you by Go Racing plan your day at the races at goracing.ie Yes, indeed. It is Friday Night Racing on a Friday afternoon. Don't knock the concept until you've tried it. If you're listening to this on the radio, then you missed all the visuals this afternoon when we were streaming live on youtube.com forward slash off the ball. You should hit subscribe on that, by the way, if you haven't already. Uh, we're also on Facebook in the afternoons and YouTube and Twitter in the afternoons as well. With us this week, as ever, we've got Johnny Ward, but our special guest is Kate Harrington. Kate, how are you? Very well, thank you. Johnny, you'd barely see him there in his camouflage jersey. I, I'd argue we're both special, really, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in many, many ways. <laughs> um, and did you get your tickets, Johnny? I, I, I've been... I want to make an appeal, you know. I want more tickets. I only have two at the moment. I'm trying ah, yeah, to look after it. The Ward family is obviously a big family befitting the name, you know. So I'm um, looking for more tickets. That's not how a request goes. You plead the poor mouth. Um, and you go, I've got no tickets. I'm honest to a fault. I have, um, I, I procured two Lower Hogan today, so I'm delighted with that. Just choosing, like, it's kind of like choosing your best man now. Who am I going to bring? Like, Kate, you could come. You should, you yeah. should, I'll be in Deauville. You'll be in Deauville with I'm So Fancy. Yeah, I'm So Fancy in Deauville. You should have had Mark Enright in here this week. He would have had his Limerick jersey on. We had him a week go. early. Yeah, you had yeah. him a week early. And we completely forgot to ask him if he had tickets. He doesn't have tickets, or didn't at that stage. He doesn't have tickets. He is looking for tickets. Yeah. So anyone out there? Yeah. I think Mark will be looked after, surely. A much better cause than you, who already have two, Johnny. Yeah. 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 You could bring Mark, Johnny. Yeah. I, we'd have a good crack, actually, the two of us. Uh, across the barricade style. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of Limerick mates going to the game with us, and um, it's going to be some crack. And funnily enough, just because Galway won it last year, I won't be quite as good at if they don't win it. No, you're going to be a good loser this time. I'll be, yeah. Uh, Thanks, sir. Kate, it's not obviously your uh, first and most recent trip to Deauville, so um, let's talk about the superstar that you have on your books at the moment, Alpha Centauri, doing unbelievable stuff. Yeah, she sure is. Um, like, if you kind of look back to Leopardstown at the start of the year when she ran in the Guineas trial and it was on heavy ground and she ran disappointingly, um, but Colm came back in after that day and said, no, no, that was spot on, like the ground was too heavy. She, if you actually look back on it, she nearly got put out through a doll by Ryan um, on the wide outside. I think they were nearly over at the chase course uh, trying to get a bit nicer ground. But um, she did a lovely bit of work that mum decided then not to run her between then and the guineas. And she did a fantastic bit of work at Leopardstown one day after racing and we knew she was on track and can i ask you about that right what does it what does that mean the fantastic bit of work she just she yeah she mum decided not there was a race for her that day it was another trial at leopardstown and mum decided not to run her that she just wanted to have her own pacemaker it there was three four horses in the bit of work and um, we had two pacemakers and a, another horse called land shark was in the bit of work and colin rode her and she just came around the home bend at leopardstown and just took off and we knew that Alpha Centauri that we knew at the middle of last season was back. And so it's unbelievably tactical to like try and get a horse back into form mm. and, and make sure that you don't run the race because if you run the race mm. and things don't go well then you don't have a, a clear view. Y yeah. Exactly and like it, it's a testament to my mum and Colm and the team at home that we had her spot on that day and do you know, she's a very, very easy filly, well, touch wood, <laughs> we've got the rest of the season to go, but she's a very straightforward filly um, to deal with at home, like, she takes her work well, like, when she came back, um, she was lucky enough, she flew over and back um, to Deauville at the weekend, and she, on Sunday evening, she was home by 10 o'clock, and um, by the time she got into her stable, she, and we were just trying to get the bandages off before we gave, um, gave her her feed, and she was actually going to, I think knock the door down or kill someone because if she didn't have her feed and that just shows her constitution she'd been on a long trip over and back run a massive race and all she wanted to do is get Perfect. her head in the feed, feed pot yeah <laughs> i understand that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and she's big she's a lot to feed yeah you were saying that you were impressed by the size yeah because i was actually at nace when she made her debut and um i remember jessica was saying that uh, she had to send her waist figure back three times because she couldn't believe it. It was just completely illogical for a two-year-old filly. It was more akin to what a jumper would. Um, and this was a two-year-old filly. As and a yearling when she came in. Yeah. She wasn't even two, she was a yearling. I didn't even know that, yeah. Yeah, she and, was um, December time when she came in. And we, everyone was kind of there. It was the first day of NACE and it was it was a strange race card because it was the Curra meeting but it was at NACE because the Curra was being done up at that stage and uh, it was a novelty feeling about it and it was just like 
could be something quite special here because she was so big she just had to train on there was no way she couldn't train on and that's why then at the start of the year when she'd run disappointingly in the trial and disappointingly in the back end trial you were like this is an affront to logic if she doesn't train on and I remember she was 33 to 1 the morning of the Guineas and people had written her off that she obviously hadn't trained on and I remember texting uh, Kate and she's like she's absolutely bombing like and it's it's, it's just impossible to think one of the best fillies we've ever seen was 33 to 1 for the Irish Guineas the Friday of the race. If she ran it now, she'd be about fives on. When do you know she's special? Like, is it after she wins that race? You kind of, because you, you know. I think we knew she was special the first day she went to the Curra. Right. And I'll put it into context. We were, I think there was about 10 two year olds went over and there was all jockeys on every, all of them and whatever. And um, I had nominated myself for Alpha because Alpha was bomb proof. Like that's, I think, what makes her so good is she was the bus. And I remember we were going down across um, the very open space of the Curra. This is kind of, I'd say, beginning of March time. I think it was a week before Cheltenham. And um, in March, and we're massive open spaces, two year olds going every which way. And I think Shane Foley turned around to me and goes, Kate, what three year old is that? That is huge. And I go, Turn around and go, no, no, this is a two year old. He goes, God, it must be no good. It is going down here like an old hunter. And like she was just leading them away, leading them away. And um, like I'd be a bit heavier than the flat jockeys. And I rode her, her. I think I was, Shane was definitely in my group. I think Connor Hoban. So this is just like a, a training run? Yeah, yeah. So the, they broke up into two groups of five, I think. And I remember I was leading along an alpha and I got to the furlong pole and I just let her quicken up slightly. Well, I, I left them for dead. Right. And I think that day I was kind of down over the top of Walsh's Hill, if anyone knows the Cura, um, before I got her pulled up. And um, Mum actually had to drive up in the car. She thought something had happened or I fell off because <laughs> everyone else had pulled up, but I was nowhere to be seen. So um, I came back up and said, yeah, she's good. And I think Mum said, she's more than good. Mum always said from that day, she knew there was something serious. And so when the trials don't go well, like, it's just, you just think, you don't doubt the fact that you thought the horse was amazing, you're just thinking, okay, we need to plot this differently. Yeah, exactly. And maybe because she was so big um, as a two-year-old, like she won in Nace and then she came back and won again the listed race and then went to um, Ascot and just got touched off by a different league, by very, very a, a, neck, a, neck, yeah. a neck. And then she had the summer off and maybe... And she came back and then ran disappointingly on heavy, it was heavy ground, wasn't it, the Moy Glare? And you have to kind of think maybe it was just, she possibly had gone a bit weak at that time. I remember her going to Ascot last year and she suddenly had gone very up behind, like she was growing, growing big time at, at that. And even maybe at the start of the year, she was still up a bit behind. And she, just before the Guineas, she suddenly had stopped her growing and had levelled off. How, how would that be in terms of just the horses in the middle of growth, like as a two-year-old and you're running at a Royal Ascot? Yeah, well, you know, you have to take your chances. Like when they're there and they're working well, you have to go with it. But you have this kind of awareness that there might be just... There might of, be. They yeah. might be. They might go a bit shelly and they might, they might just run a slightly below par. But you say up behind, what do you mean? Like so she's grown, horses generally, when they grow, they'll grow behind first and then they'll catch, uh, up. catch up in front and they've a term like they'll be rounded their withers because their wither hasn't come up right. um, to level off with their back end. Um, and those horses obviously are not going to run as fast as they will when they're finished. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they won't. But some of them still do. Some of them still do and some of them it won't affect them. So you just got to mm. take your chance. Yeah. And I think like um, with her now, she has levelled off and I think they, they were on Twitter last week, um, ITM took a lot of photos of her before and she'd had whatever, four runs this year already and she was, she still looks like a bull, like she looks really, really well and she's only starting to fill her frame. Okay, so we haven't seen the best yet? Well, well and no. she's training on at four? Yes, by the looks she of it. is, yeah. Um, Mum said that at the launch of Irish Champions Weekend on Monday, that it looks like she will stay in training, all being well, for next year. Which That's pretty amazing. Great. Yeah. Really and, like, do you feel pressure? I was asking this outside and you say no, and that's obviously, of course, you, like, but do you feel a bit of pressure when you have a horse this amazing and the whole world is like, ooh? <laughs> um, you 
do. Like there is kind of, oh, there's Alpha today. Is she okay? Make sure everything's like, um, it's quite funny. We have this one-eyed horse at home at the moment and I always try and make sure she's not out because he can suddenly, sometimes he takes off across the arena and just goes through horses. So I always make sure, I try and make sure Alpha's not out when he's out. Um, but no, yeah, you have to treat, like we've 150 horses in the yard and if he started molly coddling one or two, like you can't, you can't do that. You have to treat them all the same. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, the thing that made her great was you treating her the way you've always treated her. So you're not yeah. going to change now that she's starting to win races. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to go back to Deauville, um, there was some talk in the build-up to the race that there'd been a little bit of rain and that the ground might not have been perfect. It was all immaterial in the end. Yeah, it definitely was. Like I actually didn't go to Deauville last weekend. I had to stay. I stayed at the Curra, and um, because we had two runners there, and. Um, I was in the middle of the parade ring watching it. I don't know if you were watching at the races and Matt Chapman was going on and Jessica Harrington swore she'd never run Alpha Centauri on this type of ground ever again. And I was going, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad, Bubba. And Eamon tell me it's not that bad. Um, but um, if Matt Chapman had been in the same country as me, I think I would have gone for him. <laughs> Kate, that would have been fun now. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people would have backed you. you know, yeah, Irish yeah. English. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, we're starting to beef on uh, Friday Night Racing. I didn't realise we were going to... Well, Matt is, you know, Matt is, uh, he's a great character um, on TV, but um, he's he obviously has a bit of a Marmite quality about him as well, you know. Yeah. Oh, he's great. He's great. Great for racing, I think. And I think he 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 would appreciate me getting on to him about what he was saying before the race. Yeah. <laughs> what, how, how ground reliant is she? Do you think? I don't. I think now that she's filled her frame and strengthened up, I don't think she's that ground reliant. But so he's yielding she, in the matron at level seven. Be fine. No problem. Be fine. I think Mum would have described the weekend in Deauville as yielding. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. I think it will be fine. Crown, so now you know that that's uh, actually not that big a deal we anymore. We get yielding ground at Leprechaun at Christmas time. We're not going to get, we're going to get good ground. We probably will. It's down in two weeks. Um, and in fairness at the launch, um, she was, you know, it, it's probably not an absolutely vintage Irish Champions weekend in terms of one we've had. And I was just saying to the lads, it's kind of reliant on her rocking up there um, because everyone just wants to see her. She will, she has suddenly just become a superstar. And I'm talking like see the stars, Frankel, even, even nearly that because she's a filly. She's trained by a woman and she's, you know, um, just physically an absolute freak. And she's she rocks up against the males and just laughs at them. And she's getting weight off them, which is um, they're probably like, you know, what chance have we at level weight? It's not to mind, you know, having to give this monster weight as well. So it's um, happened so quickly. Like that's the thing. It's like a, a one summer like that. Yeah, yeah, no, it really has. And it was Royal Ascot, really. Like that was that performance yeah. was just out of this world. And she was sent again. She was like at Royal Ascot. I think she was like eleven to four, something like that. Mm. Uh, eleven to four favorite, which again, in hindsight, was an incredible price. Mm -hmm. And she, she won by six lengths and you, you, you know, track record, could, yeah. broke track record, probably couldn't be pulled up. Mm -hmm. And you were like, we're dealing with something a bit different here. Mm -hmm. And when you think like Ridgewood Pearl, I think was, she was the highest rated in the interim, just going back 23 years. Yeah. So you're looking at sort of like Trev, maybe these fillies that'll go into four that like were just really, really out of this world. Mm -hmm. um, but she's going to be better than her, I think. Yeah, okay, if anybody has any questions, by the way, watching on Facebook, uh, you can get them into us here, or you can always just tweet us at Off The Ball as well. A uh, shout out to Davin Finnerty and Keith Roach getting their racing fix, watching us on Facebook Live. And of course, Friday Night Racing is brought to you in association with GoRacing.ie. Um, can, can you talk to us a little bit about how the yard changes from being National Hunt to flat? Like, is this just an uh, outside, everybody doesn't really understand that a horse is a horse, and if you look after the horse well, and train them up to do the thing they're being asked to do, it's kind of the same process? It is. Um, what would be different is their kind of pre-season. Like, say we have the jumpers in now at the moment and they're doing a lot of st slow, steady, longer work. But if the flat horses come in, they do their pre-season, they do shorter distance, but still slow. Um, I have to say we're very, very lucky. Johnny, you've been down to our place. We have three amazing gallops. And they kind of mix and match and they use a top gallop for kind of their pre-season kind of work and then they'll go on to the steep hill gallop to get a bit more, it's kind of over four furlongs up a steep hill and that kind of gets them more lung fit and everything kind of get all their 
aerobically, aerobically kind of working, and then they'll start doing their faster bits on what we call the new gallop. Okay, so that's that's the flat horses. No, that's and the no, the jumpers and the flat will all do use the same gallops. Like at the moment, they're using the Ryan gallop for their kind of long, steady, and then the their steadier bits to get their main fat off them. Yeah, and then they'll go to the hill gallop to use, kind of get them fitter, more wind wind fit. And then when they start stepping it up, they'll go down onto the new gallop, as we call it. Okay, so both types of horse do exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, th- exactly the same, but they just be doing them at different speeds. And mum just treats every horse. Like if you come down to our place, you have two-year-olds, three-year-olds, 10-year-old jumpers, yeah. everything going out at the same time. We don't have set lots that certain horses go out different times. Is there, when, when you're talking about getting the, the fat off them and just kind of getting them fit like that, is that an eye test or is there like a, what's the science behind that? Well, well, getting the fat off them now, it's a more of eye test and we, we do weigh them once a week and um, the one that's got to get a serious fat off is Super Sunday at the moment. <laughs> he definitely needs to go to Weight Watchers. Um, but Dried yeah, summer. oh, did he? What? <laughs> he's coming back in very, very heavy. Um, he's making John, sizing John look um, skinny at the moment. But um, no, he's getting there, and it is. It's just get the long, slow bits of work and getting the fat off them, and just then you gradually step it up, step it up, step it up, and then some horses when you step it up, they mightn't be able to take the next step, so you just leave them at that bracket okay. for a while and then keep them going forward. And when you move them on to the, the new gallop, yeah. is that like stopwatch or again? No, it's just, yeah, well, it, it'll just be their faster bits. So it's actually the same incline as the hill gallop, but it's over a longer gradual climb. So they're climbing the same distance, but it's more gradual and you can go quicker on it. Okay. A lot of it seems like it's instinct. It, yeah. My, is mad. Yeah, mum trains a lot on her eye, like completely on her eye, and she'll do things that I'm like, what is she doing? And the horse turns up and wins, and... That's what I, that, that mystical nature of it, I absolutely love, like, and Willie Mullins is kind of the same, it's yeah. just, Patrick will just say, no idea why he did that, but like, it's not, it's just intuition, you can't mm. teach it. Yeah, you know, completely. I, I think that's why they're, you know, you've great trainers out there. But you can absorb it, like, so Willie got it from his dad, or a bit of it. And oh, absolutely. And Joseph O'Brien seems to be getting it from his dad. Are you getting it but, from your ma? Well, hopefully. Like, hopefully. I, like, yeah, so. <laughs> hopefully. And I was very lucky. I spent three years down in Ballydoyle, and I have to say I learned an awful lot down there. I was lucky enough there was... Um, Camelot was the end of his career, um, and then Australia was there, and some great fillies like Waz and stuff like that. So it was great to be down there. So apart from like looking at, at the quality of the horses, what else are you learning from Pally Doyle that you're kind of thinking, here, mum, they do this? Um, do you know, like, learned a lot, like, um, just keep things simple. And it's the little things that count, attention to detail is massive. Just keep everything simple. And you know yourself with Aiden, he keeps a lot of things very, very simple and it's the attention detail and the little 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 things that you notice or spot and they're the they're the things that kind of make I the think difference. I think Gordon Elliott as well, like just the team you have, you have to be able to trust yeah. your lieutenants. Yeah. You know, so your work rider is feeding you information that you won't necessarily be able to see with the other hundred and fifty horses. You have to trust your work riders. Mm. And I think um that's definitely one reason, and Gordon will always say that. That's the reason why one of the reasons why he's doing so well is that he's an incredible team of work riders, like that are exceptionally good riders. Not to mind judges of the horse that's mm. under them. Timmy Sheehan, skills. Whoa! Wow! Okay, that should not be. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! What are we listening to? There? What are, what are we listening to? That was actually a video I was sent of um, a six-year-old kid. <laughs> um, practicing his football um, in, a, in an indoor arena and he had two targets to hit at sent to me by a friend today it was her kid I, he remain nameless and he hit these two unbelievable targets except that we just heard his name off his <laughs> if, if he did I apologise to mother and father but uh, I, I was just thinking I've got to have a bet in this guy playing for winning in All-Ireland or playing for Ireland because he's for uh, uh, one can, of the four counties that he might be uh, can, can, can name it but I've no idea how that went off in my pocket All right, um, but uh, I was gobsmacked by him well that could have been a career ending disaster for all of us it could have, it could have. Um, but you know give me time and I will get there with the career ending disaster <laughs> <laughs> okay, is the phone on silent now, just in case yeah, any of your mates are watching? It's on silent, I don't know what happened there, it's, it's a WhatsApp video, I don't know what okay, happened. Okay, 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 right, yeah. Um, so, 
uh, let's go back to uh, reality for a second. <laughs> Talk to us a bit about how you actually ended up uh, riding, because I'm not sure that was always part of your career plan, was it? No, it definitely wasn't. Um, I was steeped in three-day eventing, um, and it, while Moscow, I was interested in the racing, but not really at all. I had like three or four event horses, and um, Moscow Flyer kind of had come into re gone retired. And I remember I was reading the Irish Field one day, and it suddenly said Moscow Flyer is coming out of retirement at Punchstown, and Jesse Harrington's daughter Kate is going to ride. And I was like, News to me. What? <laughs> I go, it was always a joke when he was running, but like I didn't think it would actually happen. And looking back on it, how, how did they ever let me up on him? Like, I was 17 years of age, never ridden a few pounds of hands. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moscow Flyer running a charity race, like. Uh, I know. What age is he? He was 13. 13? Yeah, so he was 13. like, he wasn't mad old. No, 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 no he wasn't Racing mad old. Racing, he was 12? Yeah, yeah, mm. and I was, I was only 17, and like, I think my biggest, um, I was most scared of that day was getting to the start because I always remember, if you remember when Moscow used to race, he used to tank Barry to the start. And um, he loved down like a pony with me. Thank God, thank God. Everyone had to back him as well. It was like, you know, everyone had to wait. <laughs> he was odds on, but everyone had to back him. I don't, I don't think, I, very few horses made the impression on people that he did, you know, just he had that character, that aura about him. Yeah, I think even mum said last week that um, she was like, Training Alpha's a little bit easier. Mos at least, um, she doesn't have a few obstacles in front yeah. of her. Moscow used to fall every fourth one. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Um, no, but um, for is this your mum's secret plan to get you involved? Like, I, well, I kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's like the Godfather giving Michael a few jobs here and there, and yeah. you're like, no, 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 I'm not, no, no. And that's like, oh, this is really amazing. Look, I'm a Moscow flyer. Yeah, Jessie um, would love that analogy as well. Yeah, I'm sure. she would. She oh. would. Um, no, but for that charity race, actually, you had to get your license out to ride in it. So I obviously got my license and then um, I did it, won, won the race and was like, grand, box ticked. Hang on, hang yes. on. It wasn't just grand, it must be sensational. It was amazing. Because there's was a bit of pressure, it's like a, a, a legendary all-time horse and your first ride and yeah. the whole the whole stadium has, has backed you and yeah. it's like, no I, I got applauded to the start. She got a standing ovation past the stand. Yeah, but it's... <laughs> Moscow got applauded. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I didn't. Who's yeah, this no, one sorry, on top? I, didn't, I no. definitely didn't. I definitely <laughs> didn't. Moscow got applauded coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, no, he got applauded on the way to the start and I was like, oh God, this is obviously what happens the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I'd obviously, I got my um, license and I think I was at an event the next weekend, and mum suddenly turned around to me and was like, oh, do you want to ride this horse and bumper next week? I was like, no way, what are you all about? <laughs> no, I'm grand, I'm fine, like, I've done that, no. And then I think it was my dad that was saying to me, um, he was like, oh, I've, he owned a horse that, um, which actually, Peter Quigley, um, he's running Killarney next week. Okay, go on, should I ride it? So I rode it and finished fourth, and then I rode him again the next week in Ballon Robe, and we, I think, had the red-hot favourite in the race, and I was riding the outsider, and going out on the last lap, and was when you did two, the inner loop and did two laps, I couldn't hold him anymore, just couldn't hold him, so I just let him go, and he was still in front of the line. <laughs> So I think we actually, the horse that was red hot favourite, I think we actually lost him training because I think the owner thought that we had pulled a bit oh, of a right. coup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had, we had pulled a coup. Because I think um, Mark Vahey was riding the other horse because I was at the start and I was like, do, do, do. I was like, Kate, come on, get up here, up here. Like just being nice because I didn't really know what I was doing. And um, yeah, so that's how it all started. And was it addictive? Like to so addictive, so addictive, and um, I think my next ride then was actually in the GPT in Galway, and I um, remember rocked in, and like I'd had three, two, two normal rides and one in charity race, and this is my fourth ride, going out to ride. Two wins, race race two ride wins and a fourth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not bad. Going in um, to ride in the GPT, and um, Katie and Nina turned to me, I was like, Kate, this is the roughest race you will ever, ever ride in. And I was like, okay, grand, 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 okay, grand. So this is when it was a tape start and anyway, I jumped off on the inside. It's like fifth or sixth round the inner the whole way, ended up finishing fourth. And subsequently I was actually riding. Who were you uh, riding there? Sandy Mount Earl, Sandy Mount Duke's full brother. Mm. So um, yeah, it was fourth in the GBT and sure. The rest, I think my next ride was the winner as well. It's not a bad start. <laughs> no, it wasn't. So it was addictive. It was very much addictive. You were around the Nero Grace at that time, Katie and Nina. Like they Katie, Nina, John Thomas, um, 
Kevin Power, Andrew Duff, they were all there. They were all Mark Fahey and they, they were all there. Mm. It was great. It was a great time. It was great crack riding. Mm. Then it was brilliant. So you, at that stage, you're in college as well, and kind of. I was still in school then. Okay, I was right. only in. I was going into sixth year. Right, it's not bad. <laughs> that's, that's not a bad. Uh, long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> long, long time ago. And then I kind of, I didn't really ride much during sixth year. I didn't really ride much, and then college, I didn't really ride that much. And then it was kind of when after I finished college, then I really did. And the decision to be part of the family business was that in, uh, inevitable, or did you think about it? Ish. I did study social science in college, politics and social policy or something, it's completely different. And um, I got that and then I went back and I worked at home for six months and didn't really go very well. Didn't, I was still kind of in college party mode, not really in. So mum said, right, you have to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, um, went down to Valley Doyle and no, I was down there um, for three years, enjoyed it. Uh, immensely. What, what were you doing there? Is it like riding out? Yeah, and went there full time initially, and then for two years I was full time. And then the last year I was there, my dad actually got a bit sick, so I only worked mornings, and I came up home then every afternoon. And then after he passed away, I finished off the season in Valley Doyle, and then I came home. Okay, so. and at that stage you were like, "This is what I do now." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is what I do. I think. I think it was my sixth week into Valley Doyle, it was my second weekend I had off because you worked one weekend on, one weekend off. So my first weekend off when I was in Valley Doyle, I right off, up to see the girls in Dublin, yeah, no, go, go see everyone. Then the second weekend I had off, I was like, no, I need to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> so tired. I think I was at home with mum and mum goes, God, Aidan O'Brien's not just a good trainer of racehorses, he's also a good trainer of unruly daughters. Ah. <laughs> You like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely make a fortune uh, helping people find their way in life. Very, like, gonna get you up at five five o'clock every morning. Yeah, no, I think yeah, it was five o'clock when I was commuting up and down. Yeah, you you are commuting, yeah. I was, yeah. The last year I was commuting yeah. up and down, so I hit a lot of road mileage. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you see people at the races, they're 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 just in great shape. They live healthy lives, outdoor lives. They're up early. They're they're working like their muscles and all that, and you're like they. You often look at them in envy, and you're like, you know, you're living a lot healthier of a life than us kind of slobs that go you, around you, in offices. Yeah, you, Johnny. Me and people <laughs> of my ilk, you know. You're projecting a little bit on on everybody who's watching here as well. Probably. Yeah. As then, if anybody wants to uh, give us any comments, you can get in touch with us uh, at Off the Ball on Twitter. Um, like, it must be enjoyable when things are going as well for you guys as they are at the moment. Like. Uh, the whole industry came through a really tough period with the recession. A load of um, small trainers couldn't keep going, but when you tough it out and you come through the other side of that, there's a real sense of fulfilment. And that is actually probably when the recession hit, that's when Mum was fortunate enough, she got a couple of really good horses from America, and that's probably, like Path Fork, Laughing Lashes, um, that's probably what moved her into more of the flash, because we lost a lot of um, our smaller syndicates, smaller owners, and we had um, my brother-in-law actually bought a few horses with a couple of his friends in America and brought them back here to race. So that's kind of how it really did start, kind of. What are you numbers-wise now versus one versus the other? 50-50, I think. Is it 50? Uh, I it's don't probably know. edging it's, towards flat. It's it sli slightly, slightly at the moment. Flat not, all the jumpers, trains the odd jumper, like. I, no, all the jumpers aren't back in yet. There's a good queue of them ready to come in. I, I find, like, your, your mother at her age, this change so seamless, like, it's just very hard to fathom how easily she did it, like, you know. Mm. It, I will say, like, we made a big investment two years ago into the place, and the new gallop um, that we put in, it's phenomenal. And, like, I, after Sizing John won the Gold Cup, I think if we just had our other two gallops, I don't think we'd have ever kept him right. And he's the hill, um, I'm he doesn't kind of go on the hill. He doesn't go on the hill. Right. Okay. <laughs> he goes on the new gallop and the top gallop. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with hills in sport. Um, Ronnie Delaney said that uh, as a kid, it was running up. There's a there's a, a street. I think it's Buckingham Street. Running up that hill made him really fast. Sonia Sullivan credits running up the hills of Cove with making her world class as a runner. And I remember Jim Bulger saying that um, he turned the corner one time in Carlo looking for a place to have his stud and he saw this hill and he's like, he knew, and I was like, you guys have a hill too. Mm. It's, I think Joe Crowley was a big um, instigator back in the day, Vincent O'Brien as well. Um, and that hill that is in Pilltown that now his grandson Joseph trains from, 
um, it has to be seen to be believed. And uh, it obviously gets you fit. And I'm, I guess nearly everyone just does it now. There's all, there, there must be an incline nearly everywhere yeah. that you work like because it's just it's an easier way of getting horses fit. Mm, big time, big time it is. And you don't have to be as hard on them up a hill because they're all. Doing the, the work, work yeah, yeah. doing the work themselves. Yeah, doing the work It's like if you're on a treadmill and you put on the incline, it's, it gets it's a lot harder. Yeah, like, yeah from, that's exactly from, it. From memory. And yeah. especially if you have a horse with a, say, not a great front leg or they've had a bit of problems in front, it just takes all the pressure off their front legs with them going up the hill. So we're like a good bit out from the meat and drink of the national hunt season, but the national hunters are all in pre season training at the moment. They're all in pre-season training. They're all there, ready to go. And it's really, like this time of year, um, as you know, Johnny, it's very exciting with the with the season ahead. And like it's great to have Sizing John back on the road, Touchwood. And he's going to go for the JN Wine up and down Royal. All being well. Okay, great. Um, we do have to try and win some money. Um, our record at the moment, for, uh, courtesy of our friends at thetote.com, our charity bet. We've raised 300 euros so far in aid of the Injured Jockeys Fund. We did that a few weeks ago. I'm not telling you how I long. Some difficult assignments since maybe five weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, so how are we doing this week, Johnny? We're going to keep it simple this week with the toast most popular bet types, which is win in each way. Uh, you've gone for two in Tremor, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. I have. Um, I did win a few bob for them back in the Cheltenham preview last year. So last year, I, I, I tipped a winner then. So I, I'm not. I, I have a little bit of credit with uh, the injured jockeys, but it's great charity. To be fair. Um, Eating bread is soon forgotten, Johnny. It is. Um, now let me find these tips um, that I put so much stock into. But no, these are Byron the, Beauty is your first one. Byron Beauty. I'll just find the times. Yeah, Byron Beauty. Um, twenty past six at Tremor. Twenty past six. That's tomorrow now. So I went for a bit of value there because she's running against Sir Willie Mullins Hotpot and um, Harry Rogers. Harry Rogers has an ability to train horses just to keep sweet. He trains horses when they're thirteen, fourteen. I, I think I've even seen him train fifteen-year-olds. Um, it's must be the equivalent of Kevin Prendergast, who, who trained a horse at Leopardstown last night, first time out, bolted up, beat a Aidan O'Brien trained horse, and he goes, this will give me something to get up for in the winter. Kevin is 86, 86, and he's like... That was the most impressive two-year-old winner I think I've seen all year. And, nice. he, and oh. you're just like, this would be beyond a, a fairy tale if Kevin at that age could have a, a proper classic contender, because he trained his second Guineas winner at... 80, I think, mm. um, Autad, maybe 40 odd years after he trained the first. And um, he's just such a man. Give up cigarettes at 50. It's never too late. Never too late. Um, so I'm going on a bit of a tangent then, but uh, <laughs> that would be a hell of a story. And so Harry Rogers keeps these horses sweet. And she's now, I think she's 10, but she her runs in Galway are very encouraging. I think she's a very good each way chance at a price. Okay, so Byron Beauty tomorrow night, uh, 20 past six at Tremor. And then on Sunday, to win, we have Get a Reason in the 3.15. Yeah, this should basically, this is going to be straightforward, go out in front, n never headed. And um, we, we could have a little each way in France as well. Yeah, definitely. I think each way, I'm so fancy, should run into a place. In Deauville on yeah, Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Okay. She's running in the 320, the Prix Jean Romanet. Okay. What kind of price do you expect her to go? She's 620 to 1. Oh yeah, okay. We like those. Mm. Yeah, little each way. <laughs> uh, so the big races this week are at Newbury, um, and we just want to talk a bit about these. The 225 on Saturday, the Irish Thoroughbred Marketing, Jeffrey Freer Stakes. Um, this is, um, just looking at this here, so yeah, 225 at Newbury, and um, Hamada is the form horse. Yeah, it's kind of hard, hard to know with this race. Hamadad, three runs from three, and um, bolt up last time, could have gone for a handicap. Um, the ground will be a bit of an issue here. I'm still going to go with Dal Harald, the Willie Haggis trained horse. Uh, I think Ryan Moore might be able to make the running on this, and basically the, it's going to be very tactical. I think we've seven runners, um, eight runners, and I think if Ryan can get on the lead here, uh, I think this horse could be hard to pass. It's a tricky, tricky race, tricky renewal of the race. But Die Hard, Die Hard will be my selection. When you're picking races to send horses to, does that mean you need to know the form of all the other horses in the race? Like, are you doing it because that... You're no, because we won't know what's going to be entered in that race then. We're just kind of looking to see which criteria of each, um, each race will best suit that horse. Okay. And what are, the, what are the various criteria that you're looking at? I mean, obviously distance and... So, say for I'm So Fancy in Deauville yeah. at the weekend, like, we're going there because we're trying to get away from Aidan O'Brien's, but Rhododendron is going. Um, but it's a four-year-old and upwards um, Phillies Group 1. Um, so there's very few of those four-year-olds, because 
four-year-olds and upwards in Ireland. Tend not to get... Because you, there's three-year-olds and then the three-year-olds have the three-year-old allowance. You have a filly for it next year. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd say she'll be back in the pre jacques Lamarwa. I think I've got it right oh, now. Nicely done, Kate. Um, and but that's over 10 furlongs. So she, she I, th- I, think it would, I, I think she could be even more excited. She'll be running in the champion stakes, oh, not the matron. Yeah, yeah. I think it could be amazing. I think 10 furlongs wouldn't be a bother for her. Next year, next year. Yeah. Next Do you reckon year. it might happen next year? I think it could. Rock up in the champion stakes? Could easily. You next heard year. it here now? Next year, next year. Could easily. Uh, but no, she's definitely going to stay at a mile this year. Harrington backs champion stakes <laughs> bid for Alpha. You read the story. It's like Kate Harrington said, maybe next year. 2019. And it's not Jessica Harrington, it's Kate Harrington. <laughs> Johnny's a G is a clickbait, it turns out. <laughs> there we are. Uh, yeah, and but it's got, I think, it had a condition that they haven't won a group one or two since a certain date. So they're not kind of there's certain conditions of it that fit it perfectly for I'm So Fancy. Okay, and when you are in the Curra with Alpha Centuri and she goes off like that and you and your mum were like having that moment, at that point you know what distance this horse will run at into the future? Like how does that, how do you slowly piece that piece of information together? Um, she goes and wins, she's showing plenty of speed. So what mum's saying is why change her distance this year? She's proven at this distance, why change it? But she would. But when you're before, you know what she can run at. How do you how do you decide? Oh, just how much pace and speed she's showing at home on right. homework. Okay, mm-hmm. you'll be pedigree as well. Like yeah, I mean, you'd, yeah. You'd I think did she win the first day over five. I think it was six. Six. I yeah, she won pace. the first day over six and then won. Um, so she's really good at short distances, and then you yeah. lengthen it out she's slowly. A, she's a stranger though. She's by master craftsman, whose average progeny dis- winning distance will be something around ten furlongs. So she's a little bit of an anomaly in that regard, and you're always wondering. In that she can, she's currently winning. She, she's winning at like she could win. She could win a probably win a proper race at six, even as a three year old. Right. And yeah. um, so she's so much speed, and then you're like, well, if she actually befitted her pedigree, she should be able to get a mile and a half, really. So you're like, if she could go to mile and two, how good could she be? And that was like Frankel stepping up and trip. You're like, wow. And he was such a hard puller, but she's straightforward. She, yeah, she's so straightforward. Like, you could switch her off wherever you wanted to. So that would indicate there would be no reason you wouldn't step up and trip. But why you don't change? Have to be beaten, why do? You know? well, yeah, well, yeah, why change something that's not broken? Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> like, are these decisions that everybody wrestles with massively, or is it just like fairly obvious to you guys? Um, it will be a decision that we might have to take. Hopefully, she stays in training for next year. Yeah. Okay. So we'll weigh it up next spring. Okay. <laughs> the other race that we wanted to look at was also it's race four at um, Newby. The Hungerford Stakes going to post at three thirty-five. What was the crack with this one? The crack with this one is is Gustav Klimt attempting to um, I don't know maybe restore his reputation. He hasn't won as a three-year-old, but I think he was probably a bit overhyped as a two-year-old because he never actually won a group one anyway. He never won a proper race. Then he got injured. He was probably favoured in the guineas and um, this year he was he ran okay um, behind Saxon Warrior. Um, he ran quite well I thought as well last time um, he, but you know will Ryan Moore make the running here as well? I was talking to David Jennings earlier on the racing post and he's like he, there's no pace in the race but I think Labrie Sabrese is more solid particularly with the little bit of ease in the ground. Um, it looks a good opportunity. Very unusual for Aiden to go for a group two with this horse um, at this stage in England. You know he's running in five group ones in a row. So what's that about then? Try to restore a bit of confidence, or it's, you know, the funny thing is, he's having um, he's having a bad year with his British runners. He's, he's operated at a nine percent strike rate, um, and I think that's down to one thing in the main. Um, just doesn't have a great crop this year, and he's had a little bit of a bug in the yard. And um, he said it's affected like pretty much all kind of aspects of the yard, and. It might be one of those seasons where he kind of just pulls the plug a little bit on some of the horses early. He's already alluding to that. Um, you know, Sergei Prokofiev and very disappointing um, at the Curra as well. But I think this is just, when you're talking, Kate's on about how this race suits, I'm so fancy. I think this race suits him in terms of actually winning a race, a three-year-old, because he win the group one is going to be tough, I think. Um, but he's taken on some decent, proper group two horses in the likes of Libris and Breeze. Yeah, okay. Are you obsessed with all these races? Are you watching that and all that kind of stuff too? Or are you more into your own horses? It's like... Into our own horses. Oh, no, I do. I do watch a good bit of the other. Like, I would look at that race now tomorrow morning. I'll see what the big races are, but I 
haven't had a look at it yet. Yeah, no, that, that's, <laughs> well, because it, it, it's interesting sometimes, like some of the jockeys we talk to are like, I'm not watching anything else other than my own stuff and I'm going to get up and do um, the horse that I'm booked to ride on and that's it because yeah. you can... No, like definitely would look at all the other races and like every evening I'd go through all the results and all that from the day, but... From a work perspective, are you looking for stuff? Like, or is exactly, it just, just like a crack? Looking, no, like looking for horses, looking for impressive horses. At the moment, definitely looking through all the English forms, see if there's any three-year-old hurdlers we might want to buy to go three-year-old hurdling next for next season. Um, like, you no, know, looking at like all that at the moment. So. Yeah. All right. Okay, good stuff. Keep the eyes open. She's also uh, trying to get back from injury as well. What's the story? Uh, getting back slow, slowly but surely, uh, I dislocated my shoulder, well it kind of half popped out um, in May time and got, got it back right after that and then a horse fell over at me on the gallop again and I twinged a nerve somewhere in my right arm. She shook my hand beforehand and it was very ladylike in the sense that she's actually unable to clench with the nerve. Now Johnny. <laughs> and I was like, now Johnny, hang on a second. It was very I have no she, power. She's not, no you power. You can shake her hand. It's like she just no completely power relaxed part whatsoever. And so she's got a, a nerve issue there. Nerve issue there, yeah. So I've been suffering doing... from her nerves, as it were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah. So hopefully, um, I'm back riding out now. But um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of rehab the last six weeks um, in Santry. So yeah. Will you be a jockey forever? Like, is that your plan? Um, no, I'll be a jockey for another few years or so. But um, definitely, the training side of things is uh, more at the forefront. Like, I've got a few point pointers um, that I was training last season, and I sold one on to um, David Pipe that will hopefully go and do big things uh, for next year. And I've got a couple for the, sp uh, for the autumn point pointing campaign and then some more for next spring. So it's just a natural kind of progression from one to the other. Hopefully all being Have you well. trained under your name? Um, uh, I've had I have a restricted license mm. and yeah, no, I was trained one winner in the point point. I didn't know that, yeah. 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 Happy yeah. days. Happy days, sold him at Cheltenham Sales, so. Mm. Was that was the pipe horse? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sold him. Um, Kind of, I could have sold and stay in the yard, but I kind of wanted to be seen to be getting out there and selling mm -hmm. under my own banner and not mummies looking after Kate and stand on my own two feet. Trying to anyway. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Might all go tits up, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a go for a year or so anyway. Yeah, you've got to try. Uh, Kate, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And thank best you. of luck this weekend as well. Uh, Johnny, best of luck on two fronts this weekend. How are you calling it? I think Limerick are going to win. I think Limerick are the value proposition at 13 to 8 in this. I think it's a 50-50 game. I tend to agree. I tend to agree, but a big, big performance coming from our boys. Yeah, you can see exactly that there's a, a really easy case to make for the reigning All-Ireland champions with one of the greatest hurdles of all time and an amazing spine to their team showing up in All-Ireland final because they've done it just as recently as last year. So, um, I did think during the show there my tickets pitch wasn't great. No. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to give me a ticket on the back of that. I'll give you 10 seconds. Go for it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a special day for the family. He's um, already got two. I already have Mark two. Mark Enright needs two. My sister is due a baby today. Um, it might carry over to another couple of days, and this uncertainty is really creating all this mayhem. We don't need all Ireland final weekend, so I do want more tickets. Um, anywhere at all, you know, in the ward name would do nicely up Galway. <laughs> On that know. note, thanks very much for joining us for Friday Night Racing today. We'll be back uh, next week at 3 o'clock live on all our social channels, or of course uh, from 8 o'clock on the radio every Friday night with Friday Night Racing. Good luck. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Go Racing. Plan your day at the races at goracing.ie.